Welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron. If you hold Cardano, this is a video that you need to see. A recent interview with Sky News has just been leaked that really sheds light on what is currently going on with Cardano in Africa today. And in this video right now, I'm going to share with you everything. So first of all, as regular Altcoin Daily subscribers will know, Cardano is specifically targeting the continent of Africa. Any company, any organization could move into Africa and create a mutually beneficial relationship with the continent by helping their people while gaining substantial usership and market share themselves. Anybody can do it. Cardano is doing it. There are over 1 billion people who live in Africa today, and many of them have no access to banks, have no access to banking-like services, have no access to record-keeping in general, or even online services in general that we in America and we in the Western world take advantage of every day. Regular subscribers of Altcoin Daily will also know that in addition to targeting the continent of Africa, Cardano has recently specifically revealed a partnership with the country of Ethiopia to help 5 million Ethiopian students and hundreds of thousands of teachers track their performance on the blockchain. So before I play you this Sky News video, and just to get everybody on the same page, Let's take a look at the original announcement so everybody can fully understand Cardano's intentions and plan of action in Ethiopia. Watch this. The big announcement that led the show was the interview with the Minister of Education from the Ethiopian government that confirmed the deal you might have already heard about. Around 5 million secondary school students and 700,000 teachers are coming to the Cardano blockchain via the Ministry of Education app powered by Atala Prism. Now, bringing 5 million people into this system is going to take some time and the onboarding for students and teachers is gonna look something like this. In the first year, the goal is to get all 700,000 teachers at more than 3,500 schools across Ethiopia registered with the system along with a subset of students that will be issued a tablet with a dedicated network that will allow them to access Atala Prism. In the second year, the goal is to have all secondary school students registered, which is when we reach that 5 million mark. There is a lot of excitement about onboarding this many people in a single deal. It shows mass adoption at a government level and it is the biggest blockchain deal ever. But what's more important is that this technology is going to change the lives of millions and eventually billions of people. So this technology, Cardano's technology, will change the lives of millions and hopefully eventually billions of people and raise them from economic hardship. Well, how specifically will it do this? What are the benefits to Ethiopian students? What are the benefits for Ethiopian teachers? Let's take a look at how implementing this technology will affect the people using it and the government's ability to help people rise from economic hardship. Once in place, teachers and students will both be keeping track of their performance. A student starting in the ninth grade will have four years of data for their educational record, and this will bring about a completely new way of evaluating the intelligence of a person and their strengths and weaknesses. One of the biggest changes this could bring about are final exams. The score you get on your final exam can determine if you can get into the college or university you want. This is highly inefficient when it comes to accurately determining someone's ability and intelligence. And oftentimes questions on exams can be worded oddly and the student might not understand and get it wrong. Not because they didn't know the answer, but rather they were confused about the question. But if a student has a long-standing history of excellent mathematics skills and for whatever reason did subpar on the final exam, they could reevaluate all that information and that student could still get into a university. Being able to track each student's skills in things like mathematics, chemistry, physics, English, their ability to read, and more will allow the MOE to pinpoint where things are succeeding and where they need to be improved. But this isn't limited to just students, it also includes teachers. The data could show that one teacher in a small village has an exceptionally high rate of educating students that excel in chemistry. This could lead to finding out what methods that teacher uses to communicate with students and bringing those approaches to new areas where students are struggling with chemistry. This data-driven approach to improving the quality of education in Ethiopia will elevate the entire country. Over the next few years, the goal is teachers and secondary school students, but the probability that this will encompass the entire school system from kindergarten to universities is a very high likelihood, and this will bring even more people into the Cardano ecosystem. Okay, so we're all on the same page now. Cardano has massive plans for Africa to help millions and millions of their people get out of economic hardship. New information on this comes out 
every single day. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel because we keep you updated on stuff like this on a daily basis. And we do have some new information today. John O'Connor, who is IOHK's Africans Operations Director and Blockchain Infrastructure Specialist, just gave a revealing interview on Sky News. And they asked him the tough questions, which is what I liked. So if you hold Cardano, I recommend that you watch the remaining clips. So first of all, Jonathan, fewer than one in five people actually have access to the internet in Ethiopia. Isn't that a problem? Welcome back. Now, in the last few years, digital transformation has been the key to Africa's financial development. Well, now a blockchain infrastructure specialist called IOHK is claiming it can accelerate growth in the continent. It's partnering with the Ethiopian government to build internet infrastructure for its students. Well, joining me now is John O'Connor. He's African Operations Director of IOHK. Uh, John, uh, welcome to you. I mean, as I understand it, fewer than one in five people have access to the internet in Ethiopia. Isn't, isn't that a bit of a stumbling block for the for the adoption of uh, blockchain technology well first of all the solution which we are building and developing for the Ethiopian government actually runs within the school context so along with the identity product that we built the ministry of education is connecting up 3,000 schools to give them access to internet and infrastructure to make the pilot run so uh, that, what are you attempting to achieve with this what, what is the, the the purpose of what you're doing so the idea is by giving identity and enabling students as well as schools and the Ministry of Education to track educational performance, we can actually increase educational outcomes, uh, much like Tony Blair's Short Start program started by doing educational changes at a very young age and tracking the data that went along with that. We hope to give the ministry more ability to impact and make decisions over their resource allocation. From a student's perspective, they can also learn on what they're good at, what they're bad at, and improve. And finally, once we get to the end of the educational system, students will be able to prove to employers with a verified identity that they've actually achieved what they say they have. And this is a massive challenge in Ethiopia. There's a big issue of fake credentials and fake degrees. And uh, yeah, uh, this gives confidence to employers, ultimately driving employment. Okay, so giving students and teachers alike internet access that's actually part of Cardano's solution. Nice. Well, what does Cardano get out of all of this? And um, what do you get out of it as a business? So we have a simple model. Um, you know, this isn't a profit center for us, but we charge a very small software as a service model to the Ethiopian government. So for all of the analytics we provide, the um, uh, deployment engineers, and the whole suite of management services that go around this, uh, we charge a nominal fee per student. Uh, but ultimately, as we say, for us, this is, uh, you know, trying to drive digital transformation in the country and isn't a core business unit for us. Now, the Ethiopian government in the past has been known to be a little bit authoritative. They have censored, they have shut down different parts of their internet before. Do you think this is a problem? Are you comfortable working with the Ethiopian government like this? Um, are you comfortable working with the Ethiopian government? I mean, they're, they're, they're quite well known for shutting down the internet to sort of suppress dissent and criticism at any given moment. You know, ultimately, when you're trying to do digital transformation in emerging economies, uh, it's very easy to get drawn into the political side and some of the challenges that happen in these countries. From my perspective, this is a very clear project. Um, we're helping to drive improvements in education. Uh, for me, this is separate from any other sort of political considerations. You know, we're talking about improving the educational outcomes of uh, millions of children across the country. And for me, it's as, it's as simple as that. Finally. This is perhaps the toughest question yet, and I'm glad they're asking the Cardano representative about this. Isn't this all just crypto or tech colonialism, tech companies partnering with authoritative governments to impose surveillance on the entire population without public debate? Is that an accurate critique of the situation here? Or has Cardano thought about this? Okay, John, I just want to read you a quote here. I, re I read an article uh, the other day about so-called crypto-colonialism, and it said, global tech companies, with the help of autocratic politicians in financial pickles, are imposing systems of crypto surveillance without public debate on entire populations. I mean, that doesn't sound a million miles away from the sort of thing that you're doing here. 
Well, this is why we design our systems to be privacy first. You know, as we build these systems, uh, input output has absolutely zero visibility to the data. You know, these systems inherently have been built to protect against outcomes like the one that you just described. You know, students will have the ability to share their data secure, securely or choose not to. And ultimately, the power is in their hands. So, you know, I would refute that article quite strongly. By design, situations like what you described are impossible with our technology. All right, John O'Connor, appreciate you joining me this morning. Thank you. This is a very exciting time to be in cryptocurrency, my friends. Anything can happen. My question to you is, are you bullish on Cardano? What do you think of Cardano's involvement in Ethiopia and Africa in general? I think, I think if Cardano can make things a little bit better for these people, that's a great thing. I don't care who's doing it. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. We keep you updated on a daily basis. This is an ongoing story. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date with us on an hourly basis. And that's it, guys. It's going to be a great year. I'll see you tomorrow.